Lola, and I'm the Director of Operations for Digital Page. So um, I know we're just now getting started, and I hope you've enjoyed the last few days of the hackathon. We're already on the last day, which is crazy from an admin perspective, too. So get ready to submit your projects in just a few hours. I'm excited to kick off our last day with two sessions hosted by one of our technology partners, Timber AI. The first session right now is about building recommendation engines with a knowledge graph workshop led by Timber AI co-founder, Dan Weitzner. So if you have a question, you can unmute yourself or message one of the admins on Discord if you have a question and aren't able to use the chat feature on Teams. With that, I'd like to pass it off to Dan. All right, thank you very much, Roshmini. Good to be here. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, knowledge graphs. What is a knowledge graph, uh, the Timber knowledge graph, and what we bring to the table, uh, all the new exciting stuff that we're doing here. And then we're going to dive in a little bit more into a specific knowledge graph, a supply chain knowledge graph that we know is very relevant nowadays, where we have uh, all this uh, craziness going on with the, the pricing of everything and the supply chain constraints that we have. Um, data is here to save us. And if we can't make sense of the data or we cannot use efficiently all the data that we have, then we're losing a lot of the opportunity for optimization and to find the better solutions to what we're doing. So let me um, start. I'll uh, share my screen one moment. Okay, so knowledge graphs. Traditionally, um, we built databases to store information, to retrieve information, so we can manage uh, orders, invoices, inventory, all sorts of uh, data that was uh, important for us to retrieve, create, update, delete. And uh, classically, it used to sit in uh, data hubs, databases, um, and since the very beginning of it, it all the uh, SQL was the primary language uh, that was used uh, to retrieve the information and to use it. So SQL, a declarative language, still relevant today since 1970 something. Uh, it has been a little bit extended, but uh, it's more or less the same syntax as it was. That's why um, in Timber we chose. Uh, to continue with SQL and to build upon it, extend it with semantic meaning to be able to do a much simpler, easier to use, uh, understandable by human beings so that every data consumer can uh, get the data that he's looking for fairly easily and rapidly. Um, many data analysts and a data scientist or anyone that's dealing with data on a daily basis um, has been aware of the uh, long time that it takes to prepare the data, to organize the data, understand where is the data sitting, in which tables, uh, in which databases. Uh, this takes a lot of time. A lot of people that uh, I know from the industry that just started as data scientists, they were expecting to work with machine learning models uh, for recommendation engines and doing uh, exciting, cool stuff with it. And they find themselves most of the time working on data preparation and um, preparing uh, all sorts of reports that require them to model the data. And in very lar large organizations, this, this can be very troublesome. Some take months to prepare a single report for organizations, for example, that have many databases across the world in different languages, uh, where you have different columns, different names of columns, and um, it's very hard to make sense of the data. What, what, what is this, uh, for example, uh, name? Uh, it can be uh, sometimes the name of a product, it can be sometimes the name of a plant, uh, sometimes it can be a string, sometimes it can be an integer, and there is no consistency with the data across the same organization. Uh, since it was made by different people at different times, um, another 
big constraint that I, I heard uh, or I, I see in the industry all the time is that many companies have a very big chunk of SQL that uh, is critical for some part in the system and is very hard to maintain. People don't really uh, can, can make sense of it. The logic, follow the logic in the query. The query can be very long. It can have many joins, many unions, and, and then you need to validate the data to see that uh, what you requested is what you got and, and didn't get, for example, other stuff in it. So you have to do the data validation as well. And what happens is that uh, an analyst or any data consumer gets a task and now he needs to retrieve all this big chunk of data and make sense of it. Uh, it's very hard when it's not organized because what you do is you model it on the fly when you try to analyze the data. And once you do your analysis, it gets thrown away. It's not used anymore. So um, with Timber, uh, all those constraints are eliminated with our Timber knowledge graph. Uh, one of the benefits of having a knowledge graph is that the data is consistent across the whole knowledge graph. You cannot have two columns, for example, with the same name as you can have in different tables of the same database. The database. And you cannot have uh, two columns with the, uh, different uh, data types. For example, one time age as a float or age as an integer, uh, as you have in databases in different tables. In, in a single knowledge graph, you cannot have that. There is also the hierarchies. In the knowledge graph, you have hierarchies. So you know, for example, that a customer can be a VIP customer, it can be a churn customer, it can be a new customer. But if you look at the table in the database, you may have a, a, a column that indicates if it's new or not, whether it's a Boolean or maybe it's just a, a string that says uh, the customer type, but but there is no hierarchies. It's just when you look at the whole database, you just get a list of all the tables. And when you look at a specific table, you just see a list of all the columns and foreign keys and primary keys and constraints on the table, all that uh, additional good stuff. So the knowledge graph really simplifies working with data, both in terms of modeling the data and querying the data afterwards. And um, we believe that you need to model your uh, knowledge base once, and then after you model it, all the data consumers can easily query it and use it. Um, so today there are many different solutions for knowledge graphs. Uh, the vast majority of them are based on uh, the semantic web RDF, triple stores, uh, which is all nice and fine, but uh, it's not SQL. SQL is much easier to learn because every computer science graduate that graduated university must learn SQL. Uh, it's the most prevalent uh, data querying language in the world um, and has been for many years and probably will be for many more years. So if you want to learn uh, how to use semantic technologies with RDF, it might be a bit more uh, harder to do than just learning SQL. Also, um, there are other constraints when it comes to SQL and, and RDF um, that are different, but um, with SQL, you can get uh, much more interoperability with uh, other systems and other uh, applications that you may need to integrate with or use your data with. So that's another benefit by using SQL. Um, that makes sense. Okay, let's let's see a little bit what we're talking about here. So here we have uh, the main uh, the main welcome page for the Timber uh, for the Timber platform, and I can see I have a knowledge graph here called Timber Supply Chain, which is what we're going to talk about today, with 28 concepts in it and a single data source. Now it. We support in Timber to connect plenty of data sources. It can be on the cloud, it can be locally, it can be MySQL, Postgres, BigQuery, and whatever data source that you that you need, we're probably going to have a connector in it. And uh, that's mostly due to the fact that we're SQL shop. So since all 
uh, SQL is so prevalent and has so much um, time already in the market, um, it has lots of available connectors for it, and we have a connector for any database that speaks SQL, even if it's a NoSQL database. <laughs> Many people um, have the error of uh, thinking that NoSQL means that NoSQL, but it's not only SQL, actually. So, uh, but, but you can query with most of them in SQL, and that's why we can connect to them too. So if you're working with uh, MongoDB, for example, there is no problem uh, connecting to Mongo and querying it with our platform as well. Okay, let's look at the Ontology Explorer. So I can go to the this timber supply chain and let's look how it looks like. Okay, so here we have a knowledge graph for the supply chain that we talked about earlier. In knowledge graphs, everything you can say that is a thing. So everything inherits from thing. Love can be a thing, space can be a thing, order is a thing, material is a thing, inventory is a thing. Everything is a thing. So thing is always on the top of the hierarchy and everything inherits from it. When I look at a customer, I can see if it, from which concept it inherits, what are the primary keys, the labels for it, the hierarchy level of the concept itself in the ontology, total pro properties that it has, and total relationships that it has. You can dive in and look a little bit more on the properties themselves. And look on the relationship that it has to other concepts and how they are connected, how they are linked, and the knowledge lineage that I have uh, for how it's connected. For example, this one is connected to the dust source using these tables through these mappings, and so on and so forth. Um, I can also get the a sample data if I want to see what it contains, this concept, and to a concept that I can map many different tables. So if I go to the concept and I show it again, right? uh, show the mappings to the concept, I can see that it has one mapping from MySQL and from which table it has the mapping. Okay, go on and edit the mapping. Now mappings can be SQL just like this. I can map it from that table to the concept. Uh, I can see the DDL if I want to write the mapping just in SQL. This is part of our semantic querying uh, DDL language. So um, we can define a mapping uh, to Timber, to the knowledge graph, into a concept and whatever properties I'm trying to match. And here it's the uh, source of the data from where I'm grabbing it. So. For example, if you go to a database now that has, let's say, 200 tables, uh, every time that you need to uh, populate or produce a report, you're going to have to make sense of the 200 tables. Oh, that's right, that table means this, or this table means another thing. Um, with Timber, you can model it once, and after you model it once, then you can reuse that knowledge uh, every time you go in. You can uh, change the mapping, you can uh, add properties, add more different sources, enrich your data model, and it all happens uh, using our virtual layer. So we're never changing the underlying data source. We're never changing the underlying data. All we're doing is we're changing the metadata of how we connect, how we plug in uh, all the, the data, where it comes from to where it goes, and that's it. So this is just a sample for uh, uh, SQL table mapping to this concept. There are other kinds of mappings. We can map many to many relationships and also multi-value relationships. And I can go uh, deeper into that if uh, anyone wants uh, or shows interest. Um, also, if I go to order, for example, the concept of order, and I look at the mappings, and I try to edit them. Now I see that I have like this more user-friendly uh, GUI to match the properties. So here I'm matching the properties that I have in the table, the table column, to the uh, concept of orders that we just chose. So I have a list of properties for the concept, and I'm mapping from the table to the order. If I go down, I can see that order ID is the primary key, also the entity label, and I can see that I also have calculated columns here. For example, revenue. Revenue is a property that is not existing in the uh, database itself. 
So what we're doing here, we're taking the product price and we're multiplying it by the order item quantity and subtracting the order item discount. And that's our logic for what is a revenue. So now when I go to order and I try to uh, get the information of an order, for example, fetch the sample data, there's 50 rows from order, and I go to revenue, I can see that we have, uh, let me see here, item, see that just the revenue. Okay, I can see that I have the revenue uh, for each one of the uh, different orders. Okay, revenue, profit, so on. Okay. Um, so uh, we here we have the knowledge graph that uh, for the supply chain. And the knowledge graph also has many different relationships here. The first relationships that you hear are relationships of inheritance. This means that Africa order, Asia order, Europe order, Latin America and US Canada order, they are all orders. And same for the customer, consumer, customer, corporate customer and home office customer, they're all customers. Uh, this means that when I map to a customer uh, the data from a table, um, all the uh, child concepts that inherit from customer will also get the data. So if I go on to con uh, consumer customer and I uh, ask to get uh, sample data, the data will come from the same source that the customer uh, mapping has. So what is the difference? Okay, here, all the three of them are logic concepts. They don't have mappings. This means that if I go and I look at the logic of the con concept, I can see that the timber customer is where the customer segment equals consumer. And a corporate con customer is where the customer segment equals corporate. So I can differentiate uh, all the different, uh, or classify the different types of customers uh, and then query specifically those concepts uh, without worrying about the rules or logic behind it. If I want uh, to make, for example, a machine learning uh, pipeline where I uh, need features only for consumer customers, then I just need to change in the query instead of from D-Timber customer, from D-Timber consumer customer. Um, but there are other types of uh, inheritances as well. Uh, not in this knowledge graph uh, at the moment, but if I, for example, in order, if each one of these orders has had its own mappings, let's say I had uh, one database, which is a US Canada order database and one in Latin America and one in Europe, and each one of them had its own mappings, then I, when I go to order and I say, okay, fetch sample data for the this order, then I would get the data from all the concept, the child concept that inherit from order. Uh, so that's also if I have different databases in different places, the Timber Virtualization Engine uh, helps us with that. And this is the most, the first primary, most basic relationship is a is a relationship. So Africa order is an order, and apparel product is a product, and so on. These are all the lines that we see here. They all inherit from thing ultimately. Okay. So we want to look at uh, shipments, for example. When I double click on a concept, I get the uh, subgraph uh, for this concept alone. And now let's say I want to look at shipments and I want to try to predict maybe uh, by the different um, products that I have, uh, what, which one of them may come late and, and, and are more at risk of uh, being late, for example. Uh, or what other similar products are uh, are also at risk of being late, having late orders. So when I look at shipment, I can see the different properties that shipment has as a customer ID, delivery status, like delivery risk, order ID, real days for shipment, scheduled days for shipment, shipment ID, uh, shipping, ship, shipping mode, shipping date, and so on. And when I look at the relationship, it has relationships to do two different concepts. One to the order concepts through a has order relationship and one to the customer concept through the for customer relationship. 
I can now right click, for example, on ship on shipment and show relationships. And now I can see the different relationships that it has uh, to the other concepts. So here I have uh, for customer and here I have for order. Now let's say that uh, from order, let's see what I have in order. In order, I have different properties as well. Customer ID, market, order city, order country, order date, when it was placed, um, order ID, and also add here. Different description to all the properties if I want, profit, region, status, and so on. Okay. So um, if I look at the relationship, I see that there is a relationship from the order to the product, includes product. Okay, this is nice. So I can go ahead and do uh, show relationships one again, once more. And now I have a map or a graph. Uh, that can connect from shipment to order to a product. I can see the relationship of how they are connected. Maybe it will be easier for me to look at it as a horizontal layout. So let me choose a horizontal layout. Okay. And now I can see uh, much easier how, how, they, how this graph, uh, how the data is related in this graph or what types of queries and relationships I can use um, in order to get from one data point to another without writing a single join in my query. So um, if I look at order uh, at product, again, let's look what product has. Product has different, uh, just category, department, product ID, product image, product name, and price. Let's look at the sample data. Okay, and I see that I have the entity label of the product, itself I have maybe just uh, uh, an address for the image I have an ID I have a price and I have category cleats indoor outdoor games water sports baseball looks good and the product name inside the department and product name. so if let's say I wanted now to model and to see uh, not just the uh, apparel shop fan shop fitness and so on products I want other types of products as well so I can go on and um, create concept from property, choose the, par the property that, that I want, for example, uh, the category. And now I get here a list of categories that I had in product, uh, not this ones. Fleets, indoor, outdoor games, water sports, and I can go on and include whichever I want to create a concept out of say cleats and let's say basketball and soccer continue and now I can this is the new concept names that uh, are gonna be created if I want to add a prefix or a suffix to it if I want to change them I can change them and once I hit on save it will go on and create the classification for those categories that I want so this is how easy it is to model uh, our knowledge graph uh, and to classify different concepts according to the data that you have in your database. Um, there are many other uh, cool things that I can show you here. Uh, uh, for example, we can show the ontology history. There's a version control of what happened when, the comparison and rollback. Every change that we make uh, in the model, we can see it in the preview SQL have a preview of the DDL. So if I want to create a concept, let's say uh, connecting from uh, my, my Python notebook, I can just run this statement and it will go on and create this con the concept. Um, and I, that's how I can model the knowledge graph uh, with purely SQL without the needing to uh, ever touch the UI, uh, which is also a big advantage because some people prefer it that way. Um, and it's always fun to see. Okay, so other cool features that we have, we have the data mapper, which is a UI where we can uh, map data to different concepts uh, through different relationships using multi-value mappings and manage all those mappings. This is uh, here. We have a place where we can uh, see views. We can create views on top of the knowledge graph itself or reuse views that you already have in the database, maybe as mappings, maybe you want to import them so that they will be part of the knowledge graph and exposed to all the data consumers. 
and that's another nice thing that we can see as well. We have the Graph Explorer. We have uh, Knowledge. Uh, Graph Explorer is uh, uh, a nice feature that I will show in a minute. And we also have the Knowledge Lineage. Uh, the Knowledge Lineage will show you the lineage of the data uh, from how it goes from one concept uh, all the down, all, all the way back to the database. So if, for example, I look at, uh, let's say we were looking at product and we were looking at um, shipment and we were looking at a uh, order and I hit go, I now have a nice map of all the um, of the views that we have. Here we have like a different uh, groups of concepts, mappings, tables, and data sources. And you can see we can go on and click on a concept, for example. And then it will give me details for that concept, different mappings that it has. For example, this one has uh, this mapping, this mapping, and this mapping. Each mapping is in a different table, in the same data source. And we can see the exact lineage that, that goes from a view all the way down to the data source. And you can hide if you want to see just, let's say, the views and the data sources. See, that way, once when you have many different data sources, it looks uh, pretty cool. OK, let's talk about the Graph Explorer. So a big part of, um, of Analyzing data is exploring the data. Um, we need to know what we can use, how we can use. Uh, this is where the, our creativity sparks, right? So we can add our additional creative value, which is always nice. So if I look at the supply chain, for example, and I choose, for example, let's start from, uh, let's say, a product. And uh, let's select all the properties for uh, for the product, which is the category, department, product name, product price, and let's bring about a uh, hundred. Let's say start with a hundred. It always blows up. Okay, so now I have different uh, products here on the graph. I can see what I have here, and there are informations. Uh, every dot on the graph is a data point. When I click on it. I get the information to which a related concept it has, uh, what, uh, what's the node type, uh, the category, department, and so on and so forth, and the relationships that I have. So I can go to the order of this particular product, I can go to the material of this particular product, produced into, and so on. And each one of the properties and the relationships, I can uh, add them to the graph just by clicking the plus sign here. So if I want to see, for example, this one is golf, uh, in the golf department, and I click on the add, I can see that it automatically connected all the other data nodes that I have here uh, to the golf department. And if I want to see the departments of all the nodes, I can go to product, choose the properties, and choose, for example, uh, the category that, uh, excuse me, the department that I was looking at. So once I add it to the graph, zoom out, I can see that I have outdoors, I have golf, footwear, a nice small graph, but this is all just products. Let's say that I want to uh, see a specific product. For example, this one, Under Armour's Girl, a toddler spine surge run. And I go to order. Let's see if there is an order for it. Well, a lot of people ordered this one. Okay, this is nice. And let's go to another one that's also in the same department, say the Columbia Men PGF. Put the orders. And Nike Men's Kobe 9 Elite Low Basketball Shoe. Nice. Okay. So in this exploration, I already found out just by looking at the relationships that for this product and this product, they were both on the same order. Just by, just by looking at the graphic and make a, a little sense out of it. 
if I want, I can go ahead and ask uh, for all the products that I have here to see all the other orders that I have. So now it will ask for all the data points that I have on the graph. I want to see all the orders uh, that I have, and I will limit the query for, let's say, 300. Uh, this number is not uh, hard-coded. We can change it according to the environment, according to uh, restriction and limitations from the DBAs. And so, of course, to uh, get uh, more costs uh, down. And now I see all the different uh, orders that are mutual. So I can now go to order, for example, and or to product, and let's see the materials, different materials that we have. So let's see what the materials they contain. Let's select all of them and bring about 300. Very nice. So now, as we expect, as we don't have those many uh, base materials, uh, see, most of them are related to all the uh, different products that are made up. And, and if I want to see which one is the most prevalent, uh, when I look at tabular data, it's kind of hard to make sense. But since we're using a graph here, it can be done very easily. All I need to do is go to the settings, and in the node scaling, I can say by uh, incoming relationships, for example. Now, when I save it, I can see that this one, the big one here, which is plastic, is what most products are made of. Not so surprising. Second one, metal. Third one, cloth. Okay, that's nice. When I uh, Look at the relationship. When I click on a relationship, I get an uh, overview of how many I have in the graph. Also, if I'm not selecting anything, I have a graph overview where I see the number of edges that I have, number of nodes, uh, how many uh, data points are order, how many data points product, how many materials, different edges that I have, and also the relationship tree. Let's see how they are uh, connected or to who they are connected in a tree format. It's also a uh, very nice and useful. You can also go to, for example, a, a specific order. And let's say this one. And on the right click, I can add connections if I want to uh, traverse to say shipments and uh, belongs to customer, for example, or ordered by customer. I add the selected to try to go and find these relationships for me for this data point. And once it's find it, it will just add it to the graph. Um, I can go. I can also go on and say, uh, for example, um, I'm only interested in, uh, let's say, this cluster, whatever is connected to this. So I can go and ask in my uh, filter graph to generally. Uh, Get the by the amount of edge, by the disconnected nodes, by a, uh, uh, a property if I want, uh, a node group if I want to keep only the products or the shipments. I can hide and isolate accordingly. Uh, let's say uh, I want to isolate only the product department uh, golf uh, relationships. I go on and I click on it and I get. I get it isolated here in the graph, and I can go on and explore uh, explore from here what I want. And you can also save the explorations, share them, uh, watch it in full screen. It's much easier to work with uh, in large graph itself. Uh, if I want to make operations on many data points, I do it from the node groups. And and if I want to go on and add new nodes, uh, let's say from something that I don't have here, for example, uh, inventory, I can go on and add new nodes as I see fit. Nice, not many. OK. So this is a, a very nice way to go on and to explore data. Um, which is uh, kind of fun, and uh, we try to make it as intuitive as possible. Okay, 
Let's talk about the main thing here, the SQL. So let's say what, 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 what is different between Timber Knowledge Graph SQL or Semantic SQL than a regular SQL. So if I look at the Timber Supply Chain Knowledge Graph and I choose a D Timber Schema, if you remember, we had the order and uh, the product uh, connected to the shipment. So if I wanted to traverse from the shipment to product, I had to go to through shipment, order, and then product, right? We can see it here as well. So if, for example, I choose uh, the, let's try for, we can start from shipment, from product, from order, whatever order we want. Let's say we start from shipment. So in shipment, I can, I can see here all the direct properties that shipment has, and I have the, the relationship to the other uh, concepts that I have in my knowledge graph. So uh, for example, if I want to go to has order, I can go to has order, and now I see all the properties that order has, order city, order country, order date, and so on. And if I want to go now from order to, uh, let's say, uh, includes product to the product concept, I can go here and look all the different properties that a product has, and I can just go on and copy the column name. And when I paste it, I see the uh, Timber Semantic uh, Query Traversal. Timber supports three different schemas. Every schema has its own uh, purpose. It also has more schemas available, but uh, th there are three uh, basic ones and others that are uh, also available, I will talk about them. Uh, we have the timber schema. In the timber schema, you will see only what's uh, related to that intrinsic, to that uh, concept itself. So if I go on and I choose, for example, a plant or order, I will see only the properties that order has. And that's it, so as, as they were defined. Uh, also inherited properties, and um, that's Timber. E-Timber is uh, the extensive Timber one. Here we flip things upside down. So now if I look in the E-Timber at the order, I will also get all the properties of all the child concepts that order has. Um, it's a bit more costly, but uh, it can help a lot in, in different use cases. Uh, we also have the D-Timber schema. The D-Timber schema is the one we use, the denormalized schema, we use it for the query traversals. So we can traverse from one concept to another uh, in this using this syntax. This is why I chose D-Timber uh, at the beginning. And then I have the relationships that I can traverse from one place to another. So let's, let's do a quick query. Okay, let's see what we have. So we're going to select, for example, and um, you can just copy this query, maybe it will be faster. Okay, and I'll just delete whatever I don't want to use. You can see that Timber already added for me automatically the first traversal. So whatever here, I have the relationship name. I'm jumping from shipment for customer to the customer concept, and I get the customer email, customer ID, customer name, password, segment, and so on. Say so I don't want the name and the password. I just want the segment, the ID. I don't want the email to. And as for the shipment, I want only the customer ID and delivery status. I don't, I don't need the IDs. And for the order itself, let's say I want, uh, I don't need the customer ID. I want the, the market. I want the order city, the order country. I don't want the date. Uh, say I want the product price, revenue, and sales. Okay, and later, uh, late delivery risk of the shipment, the shipment, the order ID of the shipment, real days for shipment, scheduled days for shipment, and so on. So the concept, we can see here that the concept is actually the context in which we're starting our query from. And our journey starts from shipment, so to say. So if I want to go from shipment to product, I know I need to pass through has order. So if I go here and paste what I, and let's, let's copy it again. So if I go, go here to has order, right? And from has order, 
I go to includes product. I now got from shipment to product. Let's say I want the product ID. I copied that uh, column, pasted it here. Now I see that I'm jumping from shipment, has order, order, includes product, product, product ID. So here's two, two jumps in the graph that I did to get from shipment to product. And let's go ahead and run it. Okay, very nice. And now I have uh, the results for what I queried, what I tried to uh, find. And I can see that I had different customers, uh, different products. But the cool thing is, let's see what Timber helped us in writing this query, which was very fast, could be much faster if I didn't have to explain. Uh, but if we look at the explain of the query itself, we can see what, uh, what you had to write without Timber, more or less. Uh, you had one join, two join, three joins, and uh, yes, and one subquery, which is uh, no more, more than one subquery, uh, which is not so easy to do, not so uh, uh, straightforward because you need to know how do you want to join it, what type of join, uh, which columns or properties you want to join, and so writing this is. Uh, not as easy as just writing this. And I can go on and do it uh, more and more and more, however level deep I need uh, to go and see and use all the relationships that I have in the data. So one, another big difference then between knowledge graphs and the uh, databases is that databases were uh, originally made to retrieve data, like I said in the beginning, uh, customer data, inventory data, uh, you just want the hard data, how many sales I had, uh, how many uh, products I sold, uh, stuff like that. Knowledge graph it's, is much more for querying relationships. I want to see different relationships, how, how, how different things are related to one another, uh, stronger relationships and weaker relationships. There are many different types of uh, relationships that you can go and explore. Um, <clears throat> I see that I don't have uh, much time. Uh, I wanted to get to the machine learning aspect of it, uh, alternating squares, but I don't think uh, I will have time uh, for this. So I'll just uh, go go on. Um, let's see. Um, moment. Okay, so this is what I, I had originally uh, prepared for this workshop, and I'm sorry that uh, we didn't have enough time uh, to go on it, but uh, what I wanted to do is uh, to prepare a recommendation engine uh, based on the alternating uh, squares uh, model, which is very useful uh, if, you're, uh, if you have a large, very large data set and you can do, like for example, a stochastic uh, gradient descent. A model because it will take a lot of time if you have a lot of uh, data in it. So just uh, let me touch on it uh, two, three minutes so that we can have uh, time. Um, but if you're interested in learning more, in knowing more, feel free to reach out um, to me or the rest of the team will be happy to help you with whatever you need. If you have any questions or stuff like that. Um, so let's see what I had prepared originally. So the recommendation engine based on timber supply chain knowledge graph. Uh, let me show it for a moment. I don't know if my screen is visible. Try to add it. Mm -hmm. Okay. There it is. Okay, hopefully you can see it now. Um, okay, so recommendation engine based on uh, Timber supply chain knowledge graph. Uh, ultra, in this notebook, I wanted to explore the alternate least square machine learning model in order to predict late shipments of orders based on delivery source city, order item, and uh, late delivery risk. About the Timber supply chain knowledge graph, the knowledge graph uh, has a sample data accumulated from different sources, such as Kaggle, 
others across the web. And the subset of the knowledge graph uh, was what I showed earlier on in the Ontology Explorer from the shipment to the product. Uh, since we want to see how the product affects uh, late shipment and what it could have recommended us. So a little bit about the model itself. Um, alternating least square method is an algorithm to factorize a matrix. So a matrix is factorized into two smaller ma matrices. Uh, consider the first matrix as a set of shipping product interaction and the factorized matrices would be shipping features and product features. And the late delivery risk matrix values uh, are events in which has specific preferences and confidence, which gave the value of each element. Confidence can be defined as the worth of the value we give to the interaction. Uh, the cost function contains M to N terms, where M is the number of shippings and N is the number of products. And data sets with M dot N terms can reach a few billion data points, and therefore we need to have uh, an alternative optimization technique a technique since other met models can take quite a while to run. The time complexity for alternating squares uh, is the linear scale to the size of the data. So uh, big O uh, x times n, where n is the length of the data set and x is an integer. More information about the model can be found in this nice blog post by Himnashu Kirpani. And uh, shout out if he's here. I don't know if he's here or not, but uh, thank you for a great uh, blog post. And let's see, what are the steps uh, that you need to make in order to use the knowledge graph uh, together with your uh, machine learning model? So uh, the first thing you need to do is to open a connection to Timber. Uh, Timber supports uh, two main ways to connect into it. You can either do it uh, on a native JDBC connection. That's what we used in this example. You can also use the REST API. Uh, so we have a REST API where you can query the knowledge graph directly through HTTP, which is uh, the most common ways that people today interact with APIs. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is to open a connection. So we specify the JDBC URI, uh, the jars that we're going to use, and a token for the platform and the token value, uh, which you can get from the Timber platform fairly easily uh, by just a click. Okay, so we start after we do the initial connection, we can uh, start uh, trying semantic queries. Uh, in Timber, we extended SQL to uh, include uh, semantic queries like you saw earlier with the create or replace concept, create or replace mappings. Those are DDL commands uh, to model your knowledge graph. This is another way you can also create relationships, alter uh, the ontology, alter properties, description, and so forth. And so here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see uh, if I can query it uh, with the show ontology. The show ontology uh, query uh, would have returned, let's see if I can run this, it take long, it shouldn't take long, but okay, great. This point, this one, okay, great. So the show ontology shows me the name of the concept, all the properties that a concept has, I get the uh, primary key, I have the uh, different uh, relationships, I have the parent concept, uh, a description, and so on and so forth. I can see that I have here all the different uh, ontology. If I want to get the list of all the concepts, for example, I go on this one and I see here all the list of the different concepts that I have in my ontology, in my knowledge graph. Uh, so Latin American order, inventory, golf product, customer, all the nice things that we saw up here. The dots for the concepts. Okay, so I see that it's working, everything's fine. Uh, next, querying the timber supply chain knowledge graph. So here is a query that I ran to get uh, the data frame. So this is all I had to do since uh, when all the data preparation happened in the modeling of the knowledge graph, I don't need to prepare nothing more than this part. So people usually, you know, you do with the DF and you try to, to uh, sort it one way or run it that way or change, uh, let's say the data types or stuff like that. Um, those, uh, most of the work used uh, in the data preparation, this step already was taken care of it. The one time that I had to model the knowledge graph. 
So either you do it on the fly every time from the beginning again and again and again and again because one week, one month, one two months from today you're going to get a similar task as a data analyst and you'll have to do the data preparation and you won't remember anything that you did last month. And when you're trying to reuse it, maybe you, you, know, you remember a little bit, but you still have to follow all the logic and remember all the things that you had to remember previously. So if you model it once, good. Uh, a knowledge graph, you won't have to worry about all that, uh, uh, the, the bottleneck of, of trying to uh, understand the logic again and how everything connects to one another. So let's let's take this query, for example. Uh, OK, and run it. OK. Are we running? OK. Oh, I didn't uh, start the connection. This one, OK. It's running. Complete. Let's see. There it is. Finished. Okay. Let's go on with this. It's running. Okay. Do, 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 do. While it's running, I'm, I'm going to continue because I see that I don't have much time. Um, okay. So after the query is running, we get results. We can uh, import the necessary libraries to run the alternating squares uh, model. Oh, here are the results. Here we see that we don't have that many results, but it's not few either. It's like uh, about, I don't know, almost nearly 2 million uh, rows, data points. OK, we have the shipment ID, late delivery. Was it or wasn't it? Product ID, order ID, order city source, and order city target. And here I have traversal. Two concepts. Okay, so we import the necessary libraries to the LS model, uh, your favorite uh, packages, Python packages that we always use. Uh, we're preparing the, a little bit of the data frames that we have, just the different codes or categories that I need to give the model. Uh, we do a, a sparse uh, matrix for the product shipment and for the shipping product run it, and then we start building the alternating uh, squares model. So we uh, define the model with the number of factors, organizations, and iterations that we want. Uh, alpha value, according to the paper where it was published, the other squares is the uh, preferred default value. And the, the uh, data confidence uh, that we want. Okay, And we run the model fit uh, to fit the model. Then we can start getting the recommendations. We ask for a specific product and we ask it to recommend it. And we get back a list of products and with the uh, accuracy that we had for them. When I look for a specific uh, product, it tells me the product ID that was uh, recommended uh, for the shipment as well. And so this is, uh, this is everything. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. I hope that I sparked your interest a bit. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be glad to hear or help. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us during this uh, wonderful technical workshop. It is the final one as part of the Inclusive Data Hackathon. And we move on to the final presentation of the event and the weekend, a roundtable discussion with Amit Weitzner, CEO of Timber AI, Shankar Ramanathan, and Alok Benjual. So we encourage you, <laughs> absolutely, uh, we encourage you to join us on the Digital Page YouTube channel and watch that live as we move over there. Thank you very much. Everyone have a great day. Thank you very much, Anita.